Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is the Evil Tech Edition of the Weekly News Roundup. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. Before we dive on into the news, we actually have my new science fiction book. Is I actually finally got my copies in stock. It took a while because of the current state of the world. Um, things are slow, but I do have about, uh, I'd say about a half a dozen books for sale here. Uh, of course, you can also buy the books online. You can head on over to synaptergy.com or tlm.li forward slash s. Click on the where to buy button, and I'm updating this as I can, where uh, it'll just basically have all of the places you can pick up the book. Doesn't matter to me where you get it, but it's an excellent book. It's available in paperback, in ebook form, and in audiobook form, and I do use DRM free services. Uh, so that uh, you are not vendor locked into uh, into your book. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on into our news for the day. And today we're going to start in. Uh, there is a new flaw um, in UPnP. It's actually an old flaw. This goes back pretty much every IoT device. This is, by the way, a good reason not to use IoT devices. But uh, universal uh, plug and pray. I mean, remember that old term, you guys, old computer hack guys, the plug and pray? We didn't call that plug and play. We called that plug and pray because it might work. It might not. <laughs> uh, but the UPnP, um, these ones, people started putting together their, their printers and your printers can now do these. And all these other different nonsense devices that have no real business being accessible from the internet. The protocol used to put every one of these things on the internet from the beginning of time is severely um, compromisable and basically turns all of these into a big botnet. So make sure you're updating the printer software. Oh, they don't push updates to those? I'm sorry, you're just going to have to have a hacked printer. Uh, but millions of printers, routers, and other devices that can ro be remotely commandeered with a new attack uh, exploits the security flaw in universal plug and play network protocol. By the way, this is also why your router has no business being manageable from the internet. Just an FYI. Call Stranger is the exploit has been named is most useful for forcing large numbers of devices to participate in distributed D DOS attacks that overwhelm third party targets with junk traffic. Call Stranger can also be used to exfiltrate data, uh, data inside networks even when they're protected by data loss prevention tools that are designed to prevent such attacks. The exploit also allows attackers to scan internal ports that would otherwise be invisible They're not um, because they're not exposed to the internet. All right. So um, with that, um, these are 12-year-old protocols that pretty much everything ever using them have been uh, exploitable. All right, uh, some more exploits. Um, Kubeflow, uh, Kubeflow in um, Azure, so Microsoft Azure, their cloud computing technology. There was a misconfiguration that caused a lot of these Azure accounts to be hijacked by cryptocurrency miners. So if you are using one of these guys, make sure you're up to date. Be aware there is a blog post on their site about the about the situation there. But basically. Uh, basically, there was an exploit in there that allowed people to get on in there and uh, just start doing a whole lot of cryptocurrency mining. And hey, you know, why not? Why not? All right. And next, we have a robot arm. So we have a wearable robotic arm that can hold tools, pick fruit, and punch through walls. This is great. Now, the downside right now, it's bulky. It requires this giant battery pack down here, and it needs to be controlled by another person. But if you actually watch the video, it, it, is, um, it is actually pretty... Um, it's not uh, it's not too difficult. I mean, it's uh, it's smooth in how it operates. So here the guy is actually over here controlling what the thing does. So you can see what he's kind of doing here. And I'm not sure what's exactly causing the arms to go in and out. Maybe it's what he's doing here with his fingers. But you can see it's going in there and, and picking the fruit off there for the basket. And I have no earthly idea if there really is a good use case. Does it really speed up the process or not? Well. Maybe in that you can have have uh, two arms picking and one arm holding the basket. Of course, in a case like this, I don't know. I might put the basket in the robot's arms and just have it hang closer where the fruit is. I don't know. It might be better. Oh, here's a, here's a painting situation. So this guy here, he is, um, or gal, I guess it is. So she's over here um, messing up a Rembrandt painting with the thing. You know, why not? And here's uh, some tool applications. 
Not too bad for you guys in shop class worried about losing a finger, but I'm not sure if there's a lot of other real good uses for this yet. But hey, you know, if you want to see how and where technology like this how it comes into effect, go read Synaptogy. It's an excellent book that questions the morality and the ethics of utilizing technology uh, inside of our uh, ourselves. <laughs> so let me know about that. And on to our feature story of today. Um, yeah, this has to violate COPA. This is, and I look, this is in the United States. In fact, this is in a state not too far from me, which makes me want to run in terror. Schools are turning to surveillance tech to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Guys, just in an FYI, if you, I mean, this is from the Centers for Disease Control. Head on back to May 20th. You'll find the latest epidemiology report where they basically say in there, children are not affected. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, up to... Uh, up to from zero up to 65, the consequences of getting this illness are negligible. That's according to the CDC. Don't yell at me about it. Uh, but still, nevertheless, we're using this as a means to uh, to track children. Now, I will remind you that a system similar to this was actually implemented in a school in Texas about five years ago, and people lost their crap over it. They're like, I don't want my children to be monitored every step that they take in the school. And the school kind of retracted and stepped back. But this is like, oh, for the name of the children. Won't we protect the children? Protect the children from what? From what? Go read the CDC's reports. I know the news media doesn't want to tell you about that because all they want to do is, spell, is sell you some fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They don't want to give you the good news. They spent the entire last several months building up that we're all going to die. CDC comes out and says, yeah, this is actually not that bad. It's on the CDC's website. Mum's the word. Haven't heard a single thing about it from any of them. But it's over there. But nevertheless, for the children, we got to keep the children safe from the evil boogeyman virus. And so this school is utilizing this mass surveillance technology. When students return to school in Albany, uh, New Albany, Ohio, anybody from New Albany, Ohio or close there too, in August, they will be carefully watched as they wander through red brick buildings and across well-kempt lawns. And not only by teachers. <laughs> The school district with five schools, 4,800 students, plans to test a system that would require each student to wear an electronic beacon to track their location within a few feet throughout the day. It will record where students sit in each classroom, show who they meet with and talk to, and reveal how they gather in groups. The hope is such technology can help prevent or minimize an outbreak of the boogeyman. The deadly respiratory virus at the center of a global pandemic that the CDC has denied. Schools and colleges face an incredible challenge come the fall. Across the world, teachers, administrators, and parents are wrestling with how to welcome pupils back into the normally bustling classrooms, dining rooms, and dorms while the threat of the boogeyman remains ever-present. Many plan to proceed gradually and carefully while keeping kids spread out as much as possible. CDC and prevention guidelines for reopening schools recommend staggering schedules that allow for smaller classes, opening windows to provide more air circulation, avoiding sharing books and computers, cl regularly cleaning buses, wearing masks and hand washing. Uh, you know, I do not see anything in here about mass tracking and surveillance. A handful are also considering deploying technology to help, quote, we are very much interested in the automated tracking of students, end quote, from Michael Sayers, superintendent for the Albany Plains Schools. He believes that the technology could help the school determine the social distancing is being observed and help quickly identify students who may be exposed if someone else tests positive. Uh... Randy Wintergarden, president of the American Federation of Teachers, says she isn't aware of other schools looking to adopt the, the detailed surveillance measures, but ATF has issued guidelines on reopening schools and colleges that warn about vendors potentially using crisis to expand data mining practices. You think? A small but growing surveillance industry has sprung up around the boogeyman already with firms pitching everything from temperature tracking infrared cameras to contact tracing apps to wireless beacons and smart cameras to help enforce social distancing at work. It's been one of the most disturbing parts of this. 
says Albert uh, Fox Kane, founder of Surveillance Technology Oversight Project. Now, Khan says the cottage industry is keen to find ways into classrooms. One of the things that the huge uh, will be a huge profit driver potentially is that young children would need specially designed devices if they don't have smartphones. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of the article. I would like you to read the rest of the article. And if anybody watching this is in New Albany, Ohio, for crying out loud, you have got to be making so much noise that that superintendent is either forced to resign or to drop the project. Period. This is insane. Number one, there is a company gathering, storing, collecting, organizing, and analyzing data. Do the parents have a say, yes or no? If the answer is no, COPA is being violated, period. Period. It is illegal. This is an illegal program according to United States law. This is a United States school district. We cannot allow the boogeyman to circumvent law. People, we can't do it. Do parents have a say? Can I say, I'm sorry, I stand against this. My child under the COPA law will not comply. Is there a measure for that? Who is the company behind this? Who all has access? I want the names, address, phone numbers, driver's license numbers, social security numbers, and all relevant information of every single person who has access to the system. Because if my child's data is going into your system, I want all your data in my system. It's called reciprocity. Let's put it into place, people. Let's put it into place. This is a bunch of nonsense. And when we do not start pushing back against this crap, we may as well just go ahead, join 1984, put our telly screens in every single part of our entire world, and be done with it. Let's just give ourselves up to whoever and whatever in the name of the boogeyman, which according to the Centers for Disease Control is not a problem until you cross the age of 65, period. I'm fired up about this crap, and I hope that you are too. Let me know your thoughts to this and the other news stories in the comments down below.